Thank you for coming tonight. Okay, Steve. Well, here's a tough topic to sober up your day. Human health, the earth, and climate change. Not adorable puppies or fishing adventures, but the slightly more serious topic of our changing climate and whether we can do anything about it. <clears throat> Hi. I'm Lori, my husband and I are physicians in Hardin, Montana, and we are genuinely, personally concerned about the health of the people around us. Most of us in this room tonight understand that the climate is changing and that it's for the worse. What we might disagree upon is whether or not there's anything we can do about it. I like to give credit where credit is due, and fossil fuels and the people that learned how to harness them ushered in the Industrial Revolution and the almost unbelievable advances we've seen in the last 200 years, and we all benefit from today. I, for one, am grateful for where that has taken us. But now we know that the increased carbon dioxide that we are continuing to put into the atmosphere from burning the fossil fuels is harming human health and our climate. And that's a problem. Almost weekly, I read new medical research that talks about health problems that are now worsened by air pollution and the increased heat. Increased heat and air pollution has been associated with heart attacks and strokes, diabetes, dementia, attention deficit disorder, preterm birth, and more. It's what caused my husband and I to want to start addressing climate change, what's been called the greatest public health opportunity of the century. The bottom line is that we need to transition to cleaner fuels to fuel our economy <clears throat> in order to protect human health and stabilize the climate, to wind and solar and geothermal and biomass, and we need to do so quickly, more quickly than is happening now. And that brings me to us, the investors. What if the investors decided to remove their shares from fossil fuel companies and do something else with the money, like maybe invest in clean energy technology? And by the way, if you haven't removed fossil fuels from your portfolio, they're almost guaranteed to be there. So that brings me to divestment. Divestment is when we remove our shares from a company or we take our money from an investment bank in order to make a statement and to realign our values with our investments. It was first used against apartheid in South Africa with success, and it's now being used on fossil fuels. Climate advocacy group 350.org launched their campaign in 2012 called Go Fossil Free, Divest from Fossil Fuels, calling on all individuals and groups with investments to divest. Thanks to student activism, over 150 colleges worldwide have committed to divestment. The American Medical Association, now that's a conservative group. The University of California, the World Council of Churches and 122 Catholic entities the largest European bank, New York City, Newcastle, Australia, home of the world's largest coal port, and the first country, Ireland. So two important points to consider. One, and this is super important because it's our money that I'm talking about, does it hurt an investor to divest? And two, does it hurt the company from whom the money is divested? The answers might surprise you. They certainly surprised me. So one, does it hurt the investor? There are actually now hundreds of socially responsible investment funds, and in the past few years, they've actually been performing as well as or outperforming the funds with fossil fuels. About one out of six US dollars are now in these socially responsible funds. So does it hurt the company from whom the money is withdrawn? Well, the companies in South Africa actually did just fine, so no, but, Apartheid fell anyway. The delegitimization of the apartheid system and the regime that supported it appeared on no balance sheet. <clears throat> it's not common to make or break corporate reputation in a single day. Reputational harm is usually slow and gradual and insidious. <clears throat> Over $8 trillion have been purposely divested from fossil fuels in recent years. But of the top 10 companies in the world that bring in the most money for their products every year, 
five of those are oil and gas companies. Divestment is still needed. <clears throat> the fossil fuel industry is not too big to fail. As money is divested from it, their reputation is questioned, some of that money is reinvested into clean energy technology, and there's less insurance money available for future projects. Their decline really is conceivable. Divestment has brought the climate communication and the climate topic into the boardrooms, and that is really significant. And when you or I withdraw our money from an investment bank or sell our shares, and we tell the company why we did that, that gets into the boardrooms too, and that's significant. So besides personal investment, we can all work with the communities, the cities, the churches, the investment firms and the organizations that we're involved in, that we're members or shareholders of, and call on them to divest. It was actually one doctor that got the entire medical, American Medical Association to divest, which is pretty amazing. Divestment is empowering. It gave students a local physical move, uh, action to take. It has revitalized the worldwide movement to tackle this huge problem, and it's brought these conversations into cities and churches and states and countries and banks and boardrooms and kitchens. If you see <clears throat> divestment as the only tool to tackle the climate, the climate movement has a number of strategies and tactics, and Lord knows we need them all. The divestment is just another powerful tool in the toolbox that I hope we all learn to use. Thank you.